Gold is historically one of the oldest metals known and used by mankind. To be precise, the existence of gold on the planet is as early as the Neolithic age. Golds were initially collected by humans from riverbeds, whereas the original mining of gold can be traced back to 3500 BC. To add on, in 3500 BC, the early Egyptians used to mine gold to make exquisite jewelry, religious artifacts and goblets, and other utensils. Hence, the Egyptians first understood the existence and value of gold, and now the entire humankind is following in their footsteps regarding the usage of gold. If you follow the line, you can come across very interesting facts about this shiny metal that has been killed over, been loved, been hated, and even died for. But have you ever wondered how it's made? Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video from our channel, How Is It Made? Before jumping into the video, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload a new video. That said, let's begin. Whereas gold's worth in the current generation is growing day by day, as the metal is considered to be scarce in nature. However, speaking of the combination of the artistic qualities of gold, only with its physical properties, gold is called to be a valuable metal. Throughout history, gold has often remained the cause of battle and exploitation. For instance, the destruction of Aztec and Inca civilizations and the influx of early American gold into Georgia, California, and Alaska. As a result, the greatest gold deposit in South Africa is inhabited in the Precambrian Witwater Strand conglomerate. This gold deposit is hundreds of miles wide and more than two miles deep. However, it's estimated that two-thirds of the gold mine comes from South Africa. Moreover, other major gold-producing countries are Australia, the former Soviet Union, and the United States. Almost 65% of processed gold is used in the fashion industry, mainly for making jewelry. In addition to jewelry, gold is also used in the electrical, electronic, and ceramic industries. This industrial pertinence has developed in recent years and is now calculated to account for 25% of the gold market. To be precise, the outstanding percentage of the mined gold is utilized to make a ruby-colored glass called Violet Cassius. Detailing the purpose of Violet Cassius, precisely it's used in office building windows to reduce summer heat, and mirrors for spaces and electric mirrors so that they reflect the infrared spectrum. Physical Properties of Gold The chemical symbol of gold is AU. The symbol of AU has ductility and cutability. In its high thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, and oxidation resistance make its innumerable uses. To be precise, ductility refers to the ability of gold and other metals to be pressed or hammered into thin sheets. And as a matter of fact, the sheets are 10 times thicker than a sheet of paper. Besides, these sheets are sometimes evaporated onto glass to obtain infrared reflectance, molded into dental fillings, or used as coatings or coatings on parts. Hence, the ability or the ductility of gold is to be drawn into thin wires. When formed into thin wire, it enables it to be deposited on lines such as transistors and applied as an industrial solder and brazing alloy. Adding an example of the same, gold wire is generally utilized in the electrical connection of integrated circuits, orthodontic and prosthetic appliances, and jet engine construction. Whereas, talking of the disadvantages of gold, though they're used in industries that this is a relatively soft metal, a very, very soft metal. Therefore, to overcome this flaw, gold is usually alloyed with other members of the metal family such as silver, copper, platinum, or nickel. The unit of measurement for gold alloys is carats. Carat is the unit of 1 over 24 part of pure gold in the alloy. Therefore, 24 carats or 24K gold is pure gold, and 18 carat gold is 18 parts of pure gold and 6 parts of other metals. Making of Gold Extraction and Refining of Gold As already discussed, gold essentially exists in a pure state, although it can also be obtained from silver, copper, lead, and zinc. Besides, seawater may also sometimes contain gold. However, its amount is not sufficient for profitable extraction. To be precise, each ton of water can contain up to 1 40th of gold. Therefore, after extraction, gold is filtered through one of four main processes – flotation, amalgamation, cyanidation, or carbon in pulp. Each manner relies on the primary grinding of gold ore, and the corresponding batch of gold ore may utilize more than an additional process – mining of gold. Precisely in a vein or vein deposit, gold is mixed with another mineral ordinarily quartz in a vein. As a result, it fills the cracks in the surrounding rock. Hence, gold is collected from mineral deposits by drilling, blasting, or shoveling surrounding rocks. Deposits are usually located deep underground. In order to mine underground, miners dig shafts into the ground along the veins, and then they used pickaxes and small explosives to remove gold ore from the surrounding rocks. Then the gold ore is collected and sent to the mill for refining. 
Placer deposits consist of large pieces of gold ore like gold nuggets and gold particles washed out downstream from the deposit, usually mixed with sand or gravel. The three main methods used to mine sand deposits are hydraulic mining, dredging, and electric shovel. All the mining methods of placer deposits use gravity as the basic separation force. In the first method, a machine called a hydraulic giant uses high-pressure water to knock the gold ore off the embankment containing the ore. The gold ore is then flushed into a sluice or trough with grooves to capture the gold. Dredging and electric shovels involve the same technology but use buckets or shovels of different sizes. In dredging, buckets on the conveyor line scoop sand, gravel, and gold ore from the bottom of the stream. In the electric shovel, the huge machine is like a shovel, digging a lot of gold-bearing sand and gravel from the riverbed. Hydraulic mining and dredging are illegal in many countries because they're environmentally destructive to land and rivers. Grinding of Gold After the gold ore is mined, it's usually cleaned and filtered in the mine as a preliminary refining technique. It is then transported to the factory, where it's first mixed with water and ground into smaller pieces. The resulting blend is next to ground in a ball mill, which is nothing but a rotating cylindrical vessel that utilizes steel balls to grind the ore. Separation of Gold from Ore the use one of several methods to separate the gold from the ore. Flotation involves the use of certain chemicals to separate gold and pour the ground ore into the solution. Flotation, cyanidation, and carbon slurry are three processes used to extract gold. Moreover, they can be utilized alone or in blending with each other. To be precise, flotation, cyanidation, and carbon slurry are three processes used to extract gold. Contains a mixture of foaming agents just to make the water foam Collectors, which is used to bind to gold to form an oil film that sticks to the bubbles and organic chemicals. They're used to prevent other contaminants from also binding together to the bubbles. Next, the solution is aerated bubbles and blown the gold is attached to the bubbles. The bubbles float to the top and the gold is skimmed away. Cyanation also involves the use of chemicals to separate gold from its contaminants. In this process, the ground ore is placed in a tank containing a weak cyanide solution. Following, zinc is added to the tank which produces a chemical reaction which helps in the separation of gold from its core. The separate gold is then again distributed from the cyanide solution in a filter press. A similar method is an amalgamation, which uses the same process for different chemicals. First, the solution transports the ground ore into a plate covered with mercury. For fact, the chemical element mercury attracts gold, producing an alloy called amalgam. Later, the amalgam is then heated to vaporize the mercury as gas and leave the gold behind. Later, the mercury is collected and recycled, reused in the same process. The carbon slurry method also uses cyanide, but uses carbon instead of zinc to precipitate gold. The primary step is to combine the ground ore with water to produce a pulp. Next, cyanide is added to dissolve the gold, and then carbon is added to combine with the gold. After removing the carbon particles from the pulp, they are placed in a hot caustic carbon solution to separate the gold from the carbon. If the gold is not pure enough, it can be smelted. Smelting includes heating gold with chemical substances called flux, and then the flux bonds with the contaminants and floats on top of the melted gold. The gold is then cooled and allowed to harden in molds, and the flux contaminant mixture is hauled away as solid waste. The Future Because gold is a limited resource, its long-term future is limited. However, in the short term, it will continue to be widely used in jewelry and industrial applications, especially in the electronics field. In the past few years, several companies have focused on extracting gold from sulfide ore rather than oxide ore. Previous technologies have made this extraction difficult and expensive, but a new technology called bioleaching has made extraction more feasible. The method comprises combining sulfide ore with special bacteria that eat the core or break it down into a larger manageable form. That brings us to the end of the video. Let us know if you found this video informative in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next video.